Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, my name is Katie. Today I'm sharing three air dry clay projects and I've been loving working with this material these past few months and just experimenting with it and trying out new techniques. And if you guys missed my last air dry clay video, I will link it for you. I made some really pretty pieces. So I'm continuing on with that today. I've got three pieces that are very unique. I can't wait to share them with you. And one of the things that I love about air dry clay is that you can get a huge tub of it and it will last you for such a long time. You can make so many different things and it's very inexpensive. So I'll just show you what I mean. This is the tub I've been using for a few months now and it's from Crayola. It's like $10. It's very cheap to purchase and this is still so full. I've used it a bunch of times. It did not dry out. So I'll link this for you guys down below if you do want to try this out. So like I said, I'm trying out some new techniques today. I can't wait to share them with you. So let's get started. To start this one off, I took a chunk of my air dry clay and rolled it out into more of a rounded ball shape. Then I grabbed my clay rolling pin and just started to flatten this out into basically like a pancake shape. You can make it whatever size you want and I'll show you in the next step how I determine the size based on what I used to cut it. And I would say you want this to be about a quarter inch thick. To cut mine, I'm using the lid of a mason jar, but you could also use a rounded cookie cutter, anything that has a round shape. And I just pressed down really well and then peeled the outer edge away and it worked perfectly. I was so happy with how easily this cut it. Next, I just popped that little circular shape out and then I took a little bit of water on my finger and smoothed out the edges. When you're working with air dry clay, it really helps to keep a little cup of water nearby so you can just take a little bit on your fingers and smooth things out. The next step is to take another piece of clay and you're gonna roll this one more into a rectangular shape if you can. So basically this is going to be the part that's going to hold the actual taper candle. So I just cut off the sides to make it more of a rectangle. And then I took the candle that I wanted to use and rolled it up so that I could get a rough estimate of how big I wanted this to be. Then I peeled it off and then you're gonna go ahead and just close this up and take more water and start to close that seam together. You can just press the edges together and then take some water on your finger and smooth it out. And I did this for the whole thing. Um, you'll see little cracks here and there and you just take a little bit of water and smooth it out as best as you can. It's not going to be perfect probably, but don't worry about that. I honestly love when these types of pieces don't look perfect. They're a little bit more organic, a little bit more handmade, and I really like the way that that looks. The last piece that I wanted to make was a little handle. So I rolled out some clay into a snake shape and then I smoothed it out with some water and then I curved it into basically a C shape and that's going to be the handle. So I let all of this dry overnight. I'm going to actually glue it together at the end instead of trying to put it all together right now. I'm gonna let each piece dry separately. So once that was totally dry, I took a bit of sandpaper and I just sanded down the edges very lightly because they were a little bit rough and I just wanted them to be perfectly smooth. So once that was done, the edges were looking really nice, really smooth, and it was time to move on to the next step. I also wanted to say that I ended up breaking the initial piece that I made that was supposed to hold the candle. So you'll notice this one looks a little different because I dropped the other one. So here you can see how well that sandpaper really worked to smooth that out and take off any extra clay that was hanging on. And I did the same exact thing for this little piece that's going to hold my candle. Like I said, you can see it might look a little bit different, but same concept and you're just gonna smooth that out. And then you can just place it on top of your circle shape to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. And I used some E6000 to glue this down because I didn't trust hot glue. I want this to be really sturdy. So I just used some super glue and pressed that down to make sure that it was definitely going to bond. And then I did the same exact thing with the handle. And with this E6000, you wanna let it again dry overnight to make sure that everything is well bonded and that it's not going to fall apart. So once I was sure that it was totally dry, again, then I went ahead and painted it and I mixed together some green paint and some white to make this really beautiful green color. I think it is gorgeous. And I'm just so excited about this. And I wanna say that with these types of pieces, I usually don't light the candle when I put them in there. I just use it as a decoration. You always wanna be careful when you're making something like this. Or if you do light the candle, just don't leave it out of your sight. Um, but this is such a cool, unique piece. I just love how it all came together. And I think this is going to look so good with the rest of my decor pieces. And another thing that I did that I wanted to mention was to just paint all the way 
inside this candle holder as well so that when the candle's in there, there's no white peeking out. And also, I think it's really nice to be able to paint around the bottom where the seams are, like where I glued things together, because the paint really covers up any seams and makes it look totally like it's one cohesive piece, which is pretty awesome. Once your paint is dry, you're ready to add your candle in and style it up. I think this is so pretty, really sweet piece, and I can't wait to style it in my house. For this next project, I was super inspired by a DIY jewelry holder that Letitia made on her YouTube channel. She's an amazing DIYer as well. I'll link her video down below. But she basically made this wavy magnetic jewelry holder and I wanted to take a similar concept, but turn it into a bud vase DIY. So I just rolled out a big ball of air dry clay and then I cut off the ends and the sides to make it more of a rectangular long shape again. So then all you have to do is pick up the ends and sort of fold them into like this wavy shape. It's really simple and you don't have to use any sort of mold or anything like that. You can just use your hands to mold it into this double wave pattern, I guess. And you can use your fingers underneath to kind of form it, but it's just going to stay like this and dry exactly like this as soon as you are finished molding it, which is really cool. As always, I went in with some water and just smoothed out any rough edges, but again, I kind of love the imperfection of this piece, so I'm not going to worry about everything being perfect or symmetrical in any way. I just wanna smooth out those cracks that might form when I was bending it. Now for the bud vase part. So I'm going to be taking the end of my little paintbrush here and just placing my finger underneath so that I don't like concave the clay, but then I'm gonna push that through and then just kind of twist it around to make a nice little hole that I can stick a dried flower or dried grass or something in that when I'm done, when it's all dry. So you can do this as many times as you want. Um, you can add just a couple or you know, a few. I added about six, I think, when all was said and done. And you might not use all of them in the end. You might just put flowers in a couple of them, but I wanted to have options. So once that was dry overnight, then I just went in with some paint and I mixed together a terracotta color with some light pink to make this really pretty sort of light coral color. And I just painted the entire thing. This took a couple of coats to cover completely and you wanna make sure you're getting the front and back edge as well. Then you can add in your florals once it's all dry. I think this is such a unique and really cool piece to have on display. For this last one, I wanted to try a marbling technique. So I'm also using some of this terracotta air dry clay in addition to the Crayola clay, and I'll link both of them down below. So I started out by rolling some of the terracotta clay into a snake shape, and then I took some smaller pieces of the Crayola clay, and I just rolled them again into smaller snake shapes, and then I started to wrap these little ones around the bigger piece. And you wanna make a few of these smaller pieces so that you can wrap the entire piece of your terracotta clay. Now this technique is new to me and this was looking a little funky. I was not sure how it was going to turn out. It kinda looks like a hot dog. So then I started twisting the clay and just sort of making those outer pieces of clay a little bit more tightly wound. And then I just squished it up into a ball and started to roll it into a rounded shape. And then once I did that a couple of times and I twisted it again and you'll begin to see this marbling pattern take place. It is very cool. You don't wanna do it too much because you don't wanna just combine and blend all the clay together. You wanna have that marbled pattern. So just keep looking at it each time you do this twist and rolling motion. And then whenever you like the way the pattern looks, you can go ahead and stop. Then I just pushed my taper candle right into it and it created a flat base and I went ahead in with my paintbrush and some water to smooth out the cracks. And then again, you just wanna let this dry overnight and you are all set to go. I love the way this one looks.
as always, you guys know the drill. Let me know in the comments below which one of these projects was your favorite. And if you do try any of them out, tag me on Instagram. It's one of my favorite things. I love seeing what you guys create. And if you wanna see even more of my videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I've got Ikea hacks coming next Sunday. I can't wait to share. I think you guys are gonna love these projects and I know you guys like Ikea hacks. So super excited for that. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.